Hello and welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this episode in the Distance Handling 101 series, Basic Foundations, we're going to be looking at an element of self-control, which I'm calling station work. In our previous videos, we were looking at getting the dog to power and drive away from us. Now we want to complement that by having some self-control work fitted in. I see a lot of people who they start off agility, they've got no element of um, a start line weight. I was watching this the other weekend in a, a one to three class and so many of the handlers clearly did not have a start line weight. And even the handlers who perhaps could benefit from distance handling do not have a start line weight. And it's far too often I see it says, well, that'll come later. We've built on the drive, we'll come later. If you've watched my previous video about drive, and self-control, you'll know they go hand in hand. You can't have drive without self-control. You can't have self-control without drive. Why would you spend so much time building drive and not build in that element of self-control? You're actually setting yourself up to fail. You need that self-control to help you as you move on, improve your handling, and to give you that advantage on the start line. The start line weight is obviously the most easiest example for me to, to tell you about because it's the most obvious. Now, I have no issue with running starts when you've got a dog that perhaps is slightly underconfident in what it's doing, or if it's a start that actually benefits from a running start, and there are a handful of those. But a lot of start lines are far better when you can have that dog waiting there, even if it's just for one jump lead out. It just gives you, if nothing else, a mental advantage in the sense that you're no longer going to be chasing your dog down the first line. You're just that little bit ahead, they're going to come past you. It's just that little breathing space. I introduce self-control and weight very early on with my dogs. Um, you can see we've got Wagtail here. He is four months old. He already knows this game because we've been doing this since he was eight weeks old with a mat. Playing these games very early on gives him that ability to learn self-control in a timely fashion. And so when we actually go to start doing actual agility stuff, which is going to be for a long while as yet for him, you know, it's not going to be till he's about a year but he'll already have that knowledge and will then be able to use that to help us when we're doing other things. How I've adapted things in training these days, I do do regular weights, but this is what I'm calling a station work. Now a station work, we use mats a lot in agility training. If you've done any form of agility training or seen some videos, you may see we use mats a lot for a lot of different things, particularly like running contact. But you can use mats in multiple ways. It's just teaching the dog which way you're using that mat, if that makes sense. So it's to teach them when on a cue, when they're going to be running across it versus stationary. I want to use this mat here to give them something to target to, like Wagtail has just done, and to head to, sit on or lay down on or do something. I want this to be a place where they sit or, or lay a stationary point, right? That's what I'm calling it, a station. It's somewhere I can send them to. I want you to be there and then I can move on to the next stage. This is a way of helping the dog to understand self-control, patience, and the weight, because they've got something to aim for. They've got a target. They understand this target's where you stop. So I've just got a piece of vet bed. It's um, just, a, just a cheap piece of vet bed that I happen to have. I thought, well, I can use that. And I'm gonna use this specifically, I'm gonna be using this one for this stationary game. So when I move on, I'm gonna start teaching Wagtail running contact work. I'll be using a different mat. I'll probably use a yoga mat for that. And I won't use this. The reason being is I don't want to confuse him. If he understands that this bright pink mat, even if he doesn't see it as bright pink, because dog's vision is different, this is the mat where you go to and you hold a position. So as you can all see, all my dogs are quite invested in going onto the mat and treating it as an object where they understand if I go on this, I'm gonna get rewarded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the dogs out of the way and we're gonna show you how we're gonna start this game. So all you need is a bit of vet bed, it could be a towel. What I would like is something, if wherever you put it, try to make sure it's not slippy. Um, this is on grass, that's so not too bad. Obviously, if you're using a towel or a blanket, then if you have got it on a, a shiny surface, it could slip under the dog's feet. We don't want that. So we want something that'll sit down. Vet bed's good because it's got a rubberized back. I decided to go for a mat, by the way. I debated a few different options, and I decided to go for a flat mat because I did consider a raised dog bed because they're quite handy to have, but there's, at some point I want to be using this for the dog to jump and power off like it's a start line and I wasn't 100% sure how safe that would be on a raised dog bed. And also I was thinking that if they're up, they've effectively got to jump off the raised bed and then start line. Whereas this, they literally, if they sit on there in a sit or a down even, they're exactly as if I would have them on a start line. So 
this seemed the best option, as I say, try to have something that isn't going to slip because ultimately we're going to be wanting the dogs to sit on it and power off and run to it and we want it something that's safe for them. So the next stage I'm going to show you in this video is how we start building that understanding in any dog that we want you to go on this mat and we want you to stay there until we say different, building value into the mat. So as you can see, we've got Wagtail here. He's already demonstrating that he's got quite good value for this mat. He's learned, we did this game quite regularly when he was little, and he quickly learned that going on the mat means something good's gonna come, which in this case is a little bit of food. So if I wait a second, I'll get both dogs on the mat. Okay, so he's got the value. So why I want to demonstrate you how we begin with a dog that has no understanding for this mat. Now, obviously all my dogs do have understanding for the mat, sit, spare. So what I would want to do when I'm starting is I get down on their level, all knees, and the first thing I do is I put food on the mat, like that. There you are, on the mat, food, there it is. So all I'm doing, and you can see everybody's involved, all I'm doing is going, there's food on the mat. So that begins the understanding that the mat is a good place to go, because there's food on it. And when I begin, I don't even worry about them coming off, spare, sit, wait. I just concentrate on putting the food on the mat. They might wander off themselves, but literally I'll just do that four or five times. Then what we're gonna do is, if they're not coming off the mat themselves, because what happens usually, certainly what happened with him, Spar, could you sit please and wait, is that he would sort of be on there for a second, then he'd wander off, okay? But as he got more used to it and he realized that there was lots of food happening on the mat, then he started to stay on it, as you can see. So what we want to do now is to teach them to come off the mat. And I should add that I do not cue a position. He chose to start sitting on this mat and eventually he chose to start laying down. That was completely his choice. I didn't teach it to him. It was just something he picked up. So we've got the stationary position, but we want to teach them. We want them to not, we don't want them to choose when to leave because that's the problem people have with a lot of weights. The dog chooses when to leave the position, then the dog doesn't know when it should leave the position. It only knows when it, it just leaves when it chooses. So the next element of a weight is not just the static behavior, it's the understanding that you hold the weight until you are told to move. So how we do this is we start by when they're on the mat, and once then we know that they've got a lot of value for the mat, what we do is the next thing is we release them from the mat by having a bit of food, throwing it off, and we can say a word, we can say break, lead, whatever you like to choose for your thing. But what it is, is that they go off and they get an item of food. Good girl. Then when they come back to the mat, I like to make the mat more rewarding because generally you'll find that most dogs, the leaving is of higher value than they're going to eventually, because when they're doing an exercise, for instance, and they've got to drive to something valuable, the leaving is more valuable. So I try and make sure this is valuable. Magpie's on here. By the way, you saw that Wagtail was on here and he left of his own volition. That's not what I want. So if I was training with him, I would make sure to be concentrating on that harder. But because I'm doing this video, a little bit of leeway there. Okay, so Magpie's back on here. I'm gonna say break, and I'm gonna throw a treat. She already knows what the word break means. But the act of throwing the treat helps her understanding. And you see the second she, she's done, she comes straight back to the mat. So again, I'm gonna high reward the mat. Now, depending on your dog, you may find that it actually helps to have different value treats. So you can have a high value treat for going on the mat and a lower value treat for breaking off. So now let's try this with Wagtail, ready? Break, good boy, there it is, break. He's not so good at finding the treats in the grass. But you see, again, he come back with his own choosing. Pie. If they're having trouble, you can make sure they really see it. Break. Sit. Break. So all I'm doing is when they leave the mat, adding in that word. And my goal here is whenever I'm doing this game, before my dogs are gonna leave themselves, I'm gonna make sure I tell them to leave. So I don't want them to be in a position where I hold it so long that they decide, oh, I'm just bored now. I want them to be waiting and then I release them from it. So when I finish with this training game, for instance, you get down, what I'm gonna do, I want to remove the mat as quickly as possible when I'm done. So I'm gonna say, break, break, and I'm gonna remove the mat. So now the mat is gone, I've released them, so I ended the game, I told them when to get off the mat. 
it's all about conditioning. It's again, it's a shaping exercise. We're all conditioning the dog to the understanding that when I'm on the mat, I hold a position, I wait there, I wait there until someone asks me to leave. And if I do that, good things will come. So it's all just about building up that gentle self-control. And as I say, I find this is really useful. And I'll show you how I introduce it in other exercises as we go along. But this is a great way of beginning foundations for a start line weight, for foundations for a stopped contact, for your seesaw, anything like that. And my ultimate goal with this is that I want to be able to put this mat down somewhere, say, as a distance handler, say I've got a line of three jumps and I'm at one end, I'm going to put the mat at the other end and I want to be able to ask my dog to go sit on that mat and be ready to start the exercise so that I don't have to constantly be taking my dog back to the start line when I want to start the exercise. And so that's one of my ultimate goals. It's going to be an energy saver for me, someone who, someone who is distance handling and hasn't got, doesn't want to be constantly running back and forth. And it's going to be another element of teaching a self-control exercise it is you know to help us all the understanding that the dog goes and sets itself up ready to begin that is your basic stage i would say depending on the age of the dog you could get through this quite quickly wagtail obviously started at eight weeks he took a little time because he is a puppy he was an eight week old puppy so initially just figuring out it took him hard it took him a minute just to find the tree and eat the tree initially but i mean now you can see what he's four months and he's been doing this 10 weeks he started to lay down on the mat Quite quickly, we were doing it every day for about a minute, right? That's all we were doing, every day for a minute. You do not have to do this exercise to death. You just do it a little bit every day. And if you do it at a quiet time, just in an evening, and it will really help. And I think that's why people don't always do weights, because they think, oh, they're boring. You've got to spend all this time doing them. But as you can see, it's a fun little game. Make it a game for you, a game for your dog. And you know what? There's loads of areas in life in general where this is a really useful tool. So that's how we're building on our beginning of having station work and mat work for a great weight. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have you might like to subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and we also have a website and I hope to see you all again very very soon.